This is Prince Dykes. This is the Royal Financial Investment Group. Grand advice for the common investor. Thank you for joining for this week's episode. This week's episode is going to be entitled The State of the American Dream. That's this week's episode. But before we jump into this week's episode, let me always say thank you for all my subscribers, likes, followers, all the other good stuff. Thank you for sharing videos, uh, comments, Facebook, all the other good stuff. If this is your first video, feel free to jump on back and see about 30 videos that I have up. And hopefully you find some out there and hopefully it's helpful and useful to you. Um, also, you can find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Royal Financial Group. Um, you can go there, like the page, share the page, see great stuff that we're going to put up, that we put up daily about the market, moves that we make, investments that we make discussions all the other good stuff so follow us on facebook make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel here so thank you guys and um also if you have a uh, topic or a question that you want to ask for the next week's episode that you like to see covered uh contact is uh prince p-r-i-n-c-e at royalfinancials.com that's prince at royalfinancials.com or you can uh send a message to the facebook page or you can message me here on youtube or a comment if you want to see a topic cover or a question so thank you guys for supporting. Um, let's get straight into this week's question. This week's question was, do I feel like capitalism, or not do I feel like, but do I feel capitalism is thievery? Do I feel uh, capitalism is thievery? Um, I will say no, and this is why. Um, the reason why uh, how the economy works is supply and demand, right? So in, you, in the middle, when supply meets demand, you have equilibrium, right? So that's how we find prices. That's how we set prices. So for prime example, if I go into a store, um, I see a candy bar and I give a person a dollar. They give me the candy bar. I walk away. We both made an even exchange, right? I felt that, that means that me as a customer, I felt the candy bar was worth it, worth one dollar. Um, me as the seller, I felt that me giving away the piece of candy bar was worth one dollar, right? So we made an even exchange. Now I can take that dollar and do whatever I want to do. So theory is, you know, taking from somebody without them knowing and all that other good stuff. So I don't consider, you know, by you going out and buying things, you as a customer, if you're on the customer side of the house or the economy, you're the, you're the buyer, you're the consumer, right? So if you're on the seller side of the house, you're the person that produces and you're the person that sells to the consumers. So if you're always looking at it from the customer standpoint, you're like, wow, in the long run, the customer is going to end up, uh, with the short end of the stick which is true but that's capitalism that's the economy something that we're going to get along later on uh and something that i discussed in other uh, videos in my last video last week's um episode so um, i don't feel like it's thievery now it gets a little tricky when you get down to certain things as far as insurance right insurance is uh, a federal law is mandated by the state which you have to be covered for so you have to have insurance so you have to go out and buy insurance for your company and what these companies do they charge you a premium they take the premium for example warren buffett he's the owner of aig right so he takes all this money that he gets collectively from premium and he turns around he's in, and he invests it and he makes a return off of it so you know if you don't have a claim or if you don't have anything like that you know that's where your money goes but at the end of the day you're getting something you're getting insured because if you wreck your car or something like that you can have insurance that's just capitalism if you don't like that you think hey that's wrong then you need to get on the other side of the table you know you need to stop being a consumer and produce you know produce something and sell it so if you don't produce anything then you're always going to be a consumer so if now that you know if you didn't already know you know you have buyers and sellers you know if you're always a buyer if you're always buying something and you never sell anything and you never produce anything then you can't really say hey these people are ripping me off and whatever if you don't like it then you know create a company yourself right so um you know but you know with that being said it's not just one insurance company you have many different insurance companies that you can choose from so i don't feel like capitalism is thievery and that's why so uh, thank you for sending that question. Hopefully I answered the question. Hey, hopefully I gave you a good opinion and brought some enlightenment to your uh, question. So let's jump straight into this week's topic of the state of entrepreneurship, right? So now I feel that entrepreneurship is pretty trendy. You know, it's trendy because of, you know, a lot of youth are like, hey, you know, um, I want to start a company and things like that. And the reason why 
that's happening has becoming trendy is because of technology advances in technology that you can have somebody that's from the middle of nowhere rural mississippi for example i can live out in rural mississippi and but i can get onto the internet and i can see little movements from youtube social media i can see other people that started company record labels clothing lines uh jewelry lines uh, whatever have you you know business companies real estate all the good stuff so i said wow that's cool i would want to do that so i think that due to technology and doing the people having the internet and having uh, access to you know internet is in everybody's house and on everybody's phone that within five seconds or five minutes you can pretty much figure out anything you want to figure out via the internet right so internet is a powerful tool and i think that's is what's trickling and making this uh entrepreneurship more trendy and making people say hey you know i want to get into entrepreneurship or i want to start a business a car wash or whatever have you, restaurant or what have you and all the information is easier because if you want to figure out how to do something, it's easy to get on the Google and figure it out. Or it's easy to link up with people on social media and send messages and all the good stuff to figure out, hey, I want to know how to do this. Vice, 10 to 15 years ago, the Internet, it wasn't common to be in everybody's household. Everybody didn't have the Internet. So if you, let's say if you're from a low income area, a project, say you was raised in the projects, the inner city projects, and you went to the low income school, the inner city public school, and you live in the inner city projects. What's around you is, you know, maybe drug dealers or um, you may you may have a bunch of negative influences on you. So if you're somebody, you know, it won't even process in your mind about entrepreneurship because there's nowhere around you. All you see, you're going to mimic. You're going to be a product of your product of your environment. Now, you got to think about this. The brain is a computer, right? The brain is a computer, which means that. The only thing you're gonna be able to put, a, the only thing you're gonna put out, is what you put in. All right, say that again. The only thing you're gonna be able to put out of your mouth, speak out of your mouth, is something that you put into your brain, whether you saw it visually, or whether you heard it. You gotta put it into your brain, process it, and that's the only way it's gonna come out. Now, people are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Well, you know, it's people that create things all the time, which is very true. But people, if you notice, with music, art, everything like that. When people create something, they're pretty much taking things that they put into their head and they mix them together and they create something new. But when you look at the origin of when somebody creates something, you're going to if you take a step further into seeing how they created it, you're going to be able to see where somebody did a little variation of what they did before. So let's say music, for example, you had, you know, R&B and they mix it with, you know, funk and came up with rock and roll or how hip hop came from whatever. Oh, you know, so you pretty much everything is kind of nothing's new up under the sun. Sun, I'm not just saying nothing's new up under the sun, but it's kind of recreated. So, if what I mean by that, if you grew up in a negative environment and you watch negative stuff on TV and all you hear is negativity, you you go to school, all you see is negativity. How do you think this person is going to become a real estate agent? It's probably not going to happen unless somebody in the neighborhood or he goes to school. And learn something or somebody tells him or he gets onto the internet and able to look up something right so that's what i mean you know by now so if i grew up now if a kid is in the inner city they can easily jump on the internet and know that hey i'm in a messed up situation and this is what i want to do because i see this kid is doing it on youtube this kid is doing it on facebook this kid is doing it on twitter or a website or whatever so the internet has definitely advanced and uh sparked the trendiness of entrepreneurship you know, it made it easier. You know, it's like, hey, I don't even I don't need a physical store anymore. I can build a website or have somebody build me a website and sell my product across the world. So that's what make entrepreneurship a little trendy, which is a great thing. But the, also, the, um, why most entrepreneurs are not going to succeed or because because they're not supposed to, because this is a capitalist society and a capitalist society is pointing in the pyramid. Right at the top of the pyramid, you have the upper class. Right in the middle, you have the middle class. At the bottom, you have the lower class. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out, is that as you go to the top of the pyramid, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, right? And that's how it's supposed to be. So the very successful entrepreneurs is gonna be a small window. Like if you look at it in any industry, you look at the NBA, it's only a very few Michael Jordans and LeBron James, Kobe Bryant's. Very few out of thousands of basketball players ever reach that status. Um, you look at um music you know or if you look at hip-hop it's only a very few people that reach legendary status you know out of thousands and thousands of artists and that's the way it's supposed to be that's how in 
whatever industry you choose to go into, where this the restaurant industry, the food industry, uh, where this the construction industry, the insurance industry, the financial industry, the fashion industry, or whatever, it's supposed to be just a few people that's supposed to, you know, be at the top because it's a pyramid, you know, because like I said in the last uh, last week's episode, if everybody had a million dollars, a million dollars won't be worth anything, right? So, granted, a lot of people at the top, not saying they're the smartest or the best or the brightest, they may have more resources, they may have more knowledge, they may have more time in, maybe they started before you, so it's, a, you know, or maybe they just might be better at it than you. And there's nothing wrong with somebody being better at something than you, you know, that's way of life, you know? So, that's um, my topic of, not the topic, but that's just a subtopic of trendiness of entrepreneurship and how technology played into the trendiness of um entrepreneurship the second thing is another thing is uh, the miseducation you know for example i will speak on myself personally uh, i remember growing up and it never was taught in school i don't remember anywhere in school where it taught us about anything about starting a business you know uh, going through high school all it really taught us was hey um, either you can go work at a factory, work at a rest of retail, or you can go off to college and get a better job, or you can go out to, you know, grad school and become a doctor, lawyer, or businessman, or whatever, and you can even get an even better job. So, in my mind, growing up in high school, you was miseducated because I thought lower class meant, you know, working at the cash register. I thought middle class was um, maybe people that was like, who had a professional teacher, a firefighter, or something like that, and higher class was a doctor, a lawyer, or something like that. You know, that's what, what was kind of taught. You know, it was kind of taught like, hey, hey, the education system was structured around, hey, we're pretty much going to teach you how to be productive in the workforce. You know, it, it, it sparked no creativity, no entrepreneurship. That's what just a standard thing, right? And back then, the internet wasn't as big and as a powerful tool now to where anybody can get to it and look up information within a split second so nowadays you no know, kids have more resources than i had when i was a teenager so you know now you know everybody has the internet phones and you know all type of gadgets to get you know tablets you know smartphones to get onto the internet everybody every household has the internet so it's very easy to branch out and to think about different things and to say hey i don't want to do this this is not right now that is the farthest thing away from the truth of how i thought capitalism was set up i thought the lower class was you know the cash register worker the middle class was a school teacher and the higher class was maybe a doctor lawyer or principal or something like that so a superintendent i would say so how that is wrong is that you don't move up in society by your income you move up inside in society by your assets i don't care what nobody else says let's think about it like i said here this is uh you know, grant advice for the common investors. I'm going to break it down to the common person. We're going to make common sense of this. You know, let's think about it. If you graduate school and you are a lawyer, right? Now you had this law degree or you're an accountant or something like that. You need a job. Your piece of paper is worthless. Turn this one off real quick. Um, your piece of paper is worthless if you don't have anybody that's going to employ you, right? So if I graduate and I'm an accountant and there's nobody money to account, nobody hires me then my degree was pretty much worthless in a way if i didn't learn anything along the way but now if you start your own accounting firm or if you start your own law firm or you start your own private practice as a doctor or something like that then you're moving into the higher class because you actually own a you actually own something you own a business you own an entity that can become bigger and bigger and you know you can sell your business or whatever you want to do but you know, if you look at the higher class people, those are business owners. The middle class people are career people, doctors, lawyers, teachers, anybody with a profession or a career, military, stuff like that. And then your lower class is just people who just work everyday common jobs. Hey, you know, I'm a waiter. I go in, I get a job and, you know, they pay me. That's it. That's how it's really con uh, constructed. I said again, the lower class just has jobs. Hey, I work at the car wash. I'm a waiter. Uh, some of that nature. You know, I do small labor to get a little money fast food a lot of those jobs are just you know lower class you move up to the next room is the middle class that's where you have people that have some type of skill and they have a profession you know i'm a mechanic a doctor a lawyer a firefighter um a teacher 
um, whatever, you know, something with a career that you can, you know, do for a while and retire, get benefits, all the other good stuff. And then the higher class are business owners. Every person that's in the higher class is a business owner or they're deeply invested into another business or they own some type of business or they own something. So miseducation was like, hey, you know, as a kid, I can speak personally. And I was miseducated about how you move up in society. You know, I thought you moved up in society with education, which is true. Education is key if you are actually learning something. But a lot of people don't go to school to learn something. They go to school to make this more marketable to get a job. So that's just something to think about. Miseducation. But now people can look on the Internet. They see other people do it. They get motivated. They want to do it themselves and things like that. So miseducation is another, uh, you know, another reason why um, back in the day, well, why entrepreneurship now is having a growth spurt because of people that have more knowledge and more knowledge is able to get around the Internet and technology within seconds. Right. So another thing is, um, you know, back in the day, if you want to get a business loan, you probably didn't know how to do it. You probably had to talk to a lawyer or you had to know somebody. But nowadays you can get a business loan online. You can find other investors online. You can do a lot of things online. You can start a donation. You can start a fund online and fund you to build your own business. Right. And business a lower cost back in the day. 10, 15 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, business started the traditional way. Hey, I have a product. I go buy a store. I sell my product out of the store. Right. So nowadays is that people can build a product in their house, sell it on the Internet, have a nice website or not even have a website. Go to eBay, Amazon and they can sell things. So that's why you see entrepreneurship is uh, changing, you know, and the American dream itself is to is pretty much based around entrepreneurship. Right. Everybody wants to be in that higher class. And the only way you're going to be in that higher class is to own something. You have to own something or be deeply invested into something else. Right. So a lot of people, they are selling something in their house or their room. Then it grows and grows and, you know, it turns into something big. And, you know, now they can live that American dream of, you know, living the nice life or whatever. Right. But I will say this. The American dream is no standard definition for it. It's like beauty beauty is in the eye of the beholder success is in the eye of the beholder you don't have to be the top you know one percent of america a billionaire just to say hey i'm successful in life you know you don't have to be the middle class to be successful in life success is what you make of it success is what you want of it a lot of times people get caught up and they get trapped into to ways of thinking of hey i'm not successful because i'm not like this person or i'm not like that person we don't know how to enjoy what we already have right so that's why, uh, you know, that's why you see a lot of people unhappy because they are chasing somebody else's dream. Chase your own dream. You know, everybody doesn't have to be a multi-billionaire just to say, hey, he's successful. You know, you can say, hey, I'm cool with a couple hundred thousand dollars. Hey, I'm cool with a couple million dollars. Hey, I'm cool with a couple hundred million. Hey, I'm cool with eighty thousand dollars or sixty thousand dollars. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, you know, you don't have to have a huge mansion and you know, yachts and boats and planes and all of the good stuff just to say you're successful. It's what you make of it, right? It, the American dream could be what you make of it. You can be like, hey, I came from the projects. Now I have a house and two cars, beautiful family. I'm living the American dream, you know, work a nice job or a decent job. And hey, I'm living the American dream. And that is fine. That is the American dream. The American dream is what you make of it. Don't get caught up into what else everybody else said you got to have this type of house this type of car this type of husband this type of wife these type of kids just to be living the american dream and you know by chasing what somebody else's uh definition you're always going to end up being unhappy so make yourself happy set your own goals your personal goals what you would like to have and you chase those right so uh that's another thing the american dream is what you make of it right you know now you have a lot of people. Let's go to the negative side of the state of the American dream. Now that you see people chasing the American dream, now you have people that just like, hey, I see this guy is starting this record company or he's starting this jury line or whatever company. And they just create a name. They print it on a T-shirt. Uh, they print it on a couple of accessories. They start a Facebook page, start a website, and they just make music to say, hey, you know, this is this is our company, such and such records. 
but when you look at it they're not even doing it the right way they have no trademarks they have no business license they have no they haven't filed for they're not paying taxes they're not they don't have a business account they don't have any of this stuff they're not even a legit business you know they're not doing it the right way the correct way they're just doing it because they see it's trendy or somebody else did it and hey i want to do it too because it looks cool and you know or whatever so some people are not doing it the right way and if you are one of those people there's nothing against you but hey take the time out and do it the right way you know go out there get your business license start an incorporation start an llc start a partnership the information is right there you can hit me up or you can, there's plenty of business consultancy firms out there that'll do it create your logo buy the logo buy the name buy the slogan start a business account you know start paying taxes you know all of the good stuff so do it the legit way do it the right way so that's the the downside you see a lot of people doing it so i just want to talk about uh the um the state of the american dream so i hope this was useful i hope you got something out of it once again thank you guys for tuning in don't forget to subscribe don't forget to go to facebook and hit the like button um share it comment all the good stuff thank you have a nice day